الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أيها الأحبة May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon us and mercy upon you and bless us and bless you. Hafidhakum Allah. Ayyul Ahbab, something very important I wanted to mention as I was just listening to an individual who said he used to be an Islamist and now he is a put a, a caller to democracy in the Muslim world. He wants to democratize the Muslim world and he goes around with non-Muslims lecturing about his story of leaving extremism to another type of extremism. Ayyul Ahbab, it made me reflect upon the hadith of the Prophet alayhi afdal salatu was salam who said that we would follow the sunnah, the sunnah of those people who came before us. And we see this with many, many of our brothers and sisters. And in fact, all of us in some form or another, or many of us in some form of another, tend to follow aspects with our sinfulness and disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to the way of the nations that were destroyed and broken up before us. And in a hadith, that, a sahih hadith in Sunan Tirmidhi, قَالَ حَدَّثَنَا سَعِيدِ بِنْ عَبْدِ الرَّحْمَنِ الْمَخْزُومِ قَالَ حَدَّثَنَا سُفْيَانِ أَنْ زُهْرِ أَنْ سِنَانِ بِنْ أَبِي سِنَانِ أَنْ أَبِي وَاقِذِ أَنْ أَبِي وَاقِذَ الْلَيْثِ أَنْ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ لما خرج لهنين مر بشجرة للمشركين يقال لها ذات الانوات يعلقون عليها أسلحتكم أسلحتهم فقال يا رسول الله اجعل لنا ذات الانوات كما لهم ذات الانوات فقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم سبحان الله هذا كما قال قوم موسى اجعل لنا إله كما لهم آلية والذي نفسي بيده لتركبن سنة من كان قبلكم حديث حسن صحيح إن هذا حديث حديث أبي واقد الليثي واسمه حارث بن عوف his name was Harith ibn Auf, and it's a very famous hadith of Abi Waqid al-Laythi. He said that the uh, they were going with the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to Hunayn. And they passed by a tree that the Mushrikeen, uh, the pagans, used to call that al -Anwat. And they used to hang their weapons upon this tree to seek blessings. And so when the companions, radiallahu because they were new to Islam, as, it, as is related in another narration of this hadith, that they were new to Islam, and they said, O Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Make for us that and what, similar to the way that they have that and what. You know, make for us a tree that we can seek blessings uh, upon, similar to the way they have one. So then the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Subhanallah, this is what the people of Musa, they said to him. And then he recited the ayat where they said, where Allah says that they said, Make for us a God similar to the way that they have gods. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, By the one whose hand my soul is in, you will follow the sunnah or the way of those people who came before you. In this hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, it illustrates for us that we would, as a, an, a nation, the Ummah of Muhammad ﷺ, 
would follow the way and the sunnah of the people who came before us. And in another narration, it was asked, who were they? And it was the Prophet ﷺ said, the Jews and the Christians, that we would follow their sunnah, meaning that we would fall into shirk. We would fall into shirk and, and, and seeking uh, all the various forms of shirk. Because in this hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, these were the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum majma'een. And they were new to Islam, and they, you know, Pat, they didn't know the hukum. They didn't know the ruling. So then they asked the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because they were going into battle. They wanted blessings similar to the way the Mushrikeens in the, in the time of Jahiliyyah felt they were getting blessings by putting their weapons on this particular tree. So they were jahil of this hukum at the time. They did not have knowledge of this ruling. Radiyallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een. So the Prophet Sallallahu responded by surprise, you know, by ta'ajjab. He said, Subhanallah, because we use Subhanallah, glory be to God, the way the Arabs use it is in a way to show surprise. So the, Saha uh, so the Prophet والسلام, he said, Subhanallah, you said what the people of Musa said. And showing us that this, they had fallen into shirk. But also what is derived from this hadith, as the scholars mention, it shows us also that ignorance can be an excuse. Uh, ignorance can be an excuse. Al-udr bi jahil. Meaning that this is one of the things that prevents from making takfir of a person is that if they are not, they're totally ignorant of the ruling. For example, a person who uh, is a Muslim, or maybe they're new to Islam, similar to the way the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een were, and they didn't know. So they're, they're not held responsible, or they were not uh, considered, you know, this did not take them out of the fold of Islam, although it is, it's something azim, it's, it's the major shirk, which takes you out of the fold of Islam. But they were excused, by ignorance of this ruling. So this, from this hadith, we also see that udr uh, bijahil, or the excuse of ignorance, is one of the things which negates making takfir upon an individual. Meaning if they are not aware of the hukum, they have no knowledge of it, and it was not something widespread in their, their society to know this ruling, that they can be excused. So that as the Prophet ﷺ did, he, made, he clarified for them. He clarified for them that this was not, that this was shirk, that this was something which is uh, not uh, liked in Islam and which is disliked and hated in Islam. And the Prophet ﷺ also made clear for them that they would follow the way of the people who came before them, meaning the Jews and the Christians, that this ummah would fall into and return to some of the people from the nation of, the, of Muhammad ﷺ would fall into shirk. And as we see, Ayu al Ahbab, we see many of the people, many of the Jama'at, look at Jama'at al Ahbash, for example, or many of the extreme Sufis and others who seek blessings from their sheikhs. And often their sheikhs are dead. They will look at their pictures, they will cry, they will go to their graves, they will make tawaf around their graves, you know, go around it as if they're going around the Kaaba. They will sacrifice animals and offer it to their to the graves of their, their saints, their revered saints and revered sheikhs and revered grandparents and what have you. And this is all a form of shirk because those individuals, whether living or dead, cannot provide barakah for them. Now, you can receive barakah by the blessings of knowledge. Meaning if a scholar is passing knowledge, this is a type of barakah. You're receiving a type of barakah by seeking knowledge. Atlab al-ilm, talab al-ilm. And benefiting from the books of the scholars from before. But to want to have uh, artifacts and want to uh, go to their graves and supplicate to them, sacrifice to them, take remnants from their graves, make offerings to them. All of this is shirk. Ayyu al-Ahbab. And it is all uh, very dangerous. And that which takes us out of the fold of Islam. When we do this in order to worship other than law. Because 
seeking uh, Tabarak is a type of worship. And we can only receive those blessings from that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, only from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the various sharia means of making Tabarak. Ayol Ahbab, we have to, as far as the, the relevance for what I was referring to before of this particular individual who's a, his, he's the dawah to, is the dawah to democratia or the, the propagation of democracy, he's trying to democratize, democratize the Muslim world, it shows that he has followed a new sunnah because this is something which was not known during the time of the Prophet and in fact, in Islam, or this concept of democracy as, as is practiced in the West and propagated around the world, is not in conformity with Islam. And why do I say that, Ayyul Ahbab? Because that system and that ideology is based on the premise that the majority rules. But in fact, in Islam, the hukum is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The rulership is with your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's a divine system. And it's a system which is already set for us. The sharia is set. It comes from Kitabillah wa Sunnatu Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the ijma of the ulama, the ijma sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in and those who came after them. So ayyul ahbab, there's no room to debate various rules that are set in the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. For example, we can't say now, we, we have a more democratic approach, so we want to vote in homosexuality into the Sharia. We want to allow men to marry men. Well, this is a great uh, deviance, which is unheard of in, this, in, in Islamic history up until this present day. And it shows us that this is not the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but this is the sunnah of those people who came uh, before and who were led astray. And this is why the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in the completeness uh, of this hadith or in another narration, he alayhi salatu wasalam, he said that you would let tattibi'una sunnah min kana kablakum hudwa al kudhati bil kudha hatta lo dakhal. Or in another narration, the Prophet والسلام, he said, and this is in the Hadith of Bukhari, let tattibi'unu sananan min kana kablakum, shibran, shibran, wadhira'an, wadhira'an, hatta lo dakhalu juhra dhabban, taba'tumuhu, taba'tumuhum. Kulna, ya Rasulullah, al-Yahud wa Nasara, qala faman. So in this narration, what you'll find is the hadith of Abi Sa'id in the Bukhari, where the Prophet ﷺ said that you will follow the way of those people who came before you, uh, hand span by hand span, arm, sp arm span by arm span, uh, until you entered the hole of a lizard. You would, or even if they felt they went into the hole of a lizard, you would follow them into it. And then they said, the companions, they said, O Messenger of Allah, the Jews and the Christians? And the Prophet said, Who else? So, Ayyul Ahbab, look around you and look to the very various communities of Muslims around the world. See what they're calling to. Look to the masjid that you pray in. And look to what the administration, are they calling to Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? If not, you should advise them if you have the ability to do so. And if they're calling to other than that, and if they're calling to that we should be one ummah, meaning an ummah based on uniting with Jews and Christians in ideology and interfaith gatherings to where we, we come together and uh, that we're all brothers in in a new type of iman, then you know you should run from this community as if you're running from the plague. And this is because this is a direct uh, contradiction with tawheed, with worshiping Allah alone. And tawheed, the opposite of tawheed is shirk, polytheism. And they cannot go together. 
And so we want to be on the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa not the sunnah of those people who came before us. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and protect us from everything uh, evil and bless us with everything good and raise us up amongst the ranks of the righteous. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.